Hi, this is Matthew Cratter from Trader University. And today I want to talk about my favorite gold royalty stocks. If you're interested in learning how to make money in both bull markets and bear markets, or you just want to see what I'm investing in, be sure to hit that subscribe button. So we're going to be talking about gold royalty stocks, gold streaming stocks. And the reason I'm so interested in these is because of sort of my fundamental view on what's happening with central bank money printing. We've got the Fed and all the other central bank banks printing a lot of new money. The uh, M2 money stock is exploding. We can see how it's exploded in the first quarter of 2000, uh, of 2020. And as a result, gold has been doing really well. This is a chart of the uh, gold ETF, GLD. Uh, gold mining stocks, GDX, has done really well. And these are all ways of playing it. I prefer physical gold, though I don't own any. Uh, I prefer physical gold over an ETF like this. Uh, or over gold stocks. But I think GDX will do well over the coming years. And then if you want sort of a more levered version that will have more upside and more downside, you can look at the G the junior miners, which are GDX, J is the ticker. But today I'm gonna to talk about royalty stocks, gold royalty and streaming stocks. There's a famous quote from Warren Buffett that says, the best business is a royalty. In other words, a royalty is a percentage of revenues sort of off the top. The best business is a royalty on the growth of others, requiring little capital itself. Now, the investments I'm going to show you do require capital from the, the uh, companies, but they have many advantages over the gold mining companies. So there are two things, two kind of stocks or two ways of sort of structuring uh, gold royalties and gold streaming. The first one is called gold streaming, and the way it works is this. Basically, if I'm a gold streaming company, I give cash to a gold mining company to help them develop their mines, to do, um, uh, to do mine development and pay for whatever capital costs they will have. So I give some cash to a gold mining company, and in exchange, they give me the right going forward once that mine is actually producing gold, they give me the right to buy a certain amount of gold at some percentage below the current price of gold. In this case, this example I'm using is 70% uh, below the current spot price. So if the spot price right now is about 1730, that means I can buy it for $519. And what this does is it gives the gold streaming company sort of a fixed profit margin. They lock in this spread. They can buy at 519 and sell at 1730. If gold moves up a lot, they can still uh, basically capture the spread because they always get to buy 70% below the current spot price. Now, why would a, a mining company want to do this? Why would a gold miner want to do it? Well, it's good for them because they don't need to issue new debt. They don't need to go to a bank or they don't need to go to the capital markets and sell more debt to fund their mine development. And they also don't have to dilute their existing shareholders by selling more equity, by selling more ownership in their company. Now, it's great for the gold streaming company, which is basically a specialty finance company, uh, it's great for them because they don't need to worry about actually digging a hole in the ground and getting gold out of it. Now, digging a hole, uh, gold mining is very dangerous. It's very expensive. Uh, you have to worry about labor costs. You have to worry about safety. You have to buy heavy equipment. You have to worry about the fluctuations of the price of gold and how you're going to hedge it. You have to worry about environmental regulations, etc. So this is, um, this is a difficult business, and as a result, gold miners have to uh, really keep an eye on the price of gold and make sure that they're not uh, mining gold, that they won't be able to sell at a profit. So they've got a lot of factors. But the nice thing about it for a gold streaming company is they get to just skim the money off the top. So I'm going to give you an example of one of these deals. We're going to look at Royal Gold's agreement to acquire a gold and silver stream from Barrick Gold. This happened in 2015. This is an old press release. And I'll link to it in the description notes below. But this basically gives you an idea of how these legal agreements work. So if we scroll down, Royal Gold is going to pay Barrick, or, or paid, this happened all, obviously in 2015, Royal Gold, which is the streaming company and the Royalty Gold company, they paid $610 million to Barrick. And then in exchange, they got an agreement where Barrick, once the mine was up and running, would deliver gold and silver to Royal Gold in the amount of seven and a half percent of Barrick's interest in the gold until a certain amount of ounces had been delivered and then a smaller percentage, etc. a certain amount of silver. And in exchange, Royal Gold will pay Barrick for this gold. 
they will pay only they will only have to pay 30 percent of the spot price until they've they bought 550 thousand ounces so this is where i get that 70 percent discount number barrick royal gold basically will get to buy 70 percent under the current price of gold and then they can immediately sell the gold the same day or lock in a forward or futures agreement and so they kind of capture that spread and so that's basically how uh, streaming companies work so that's the first model gold streaming where you provide cash to the mining company and then they give you a right to buy below market going forward now my favorite is the gold gold royalty model. We talked about Texas Pacific, uh, which is an, an uh, oil royalty company in a previous video. I can link to that below, or you can just Google it. But this is um, that was an oil royalty company. A gold royalty company works in this a similar way, where uh, you give upfront cash to a gold mining company, just like we saw with uh, gold streaming. And then the really nice thing is they just pay you a percentage of sales over time in exchange for that initial payment. This has the same effect. It allows the gold mining company to develop the mine without issuing a lot of debt or stock. But what I like about gold royalties is they have a lot more upside if gold goes up a lot. So with gold streaming, you're locking in a fixed margin. You always get to buy 70% below the spot price. And so if gold moves up a lot, you don't benefit as much. But with a royalty, you're getting a percentage of the sales. And so if you have a fixed amount of ounces you're going to get in exchange for that upfront payment and um, uh, a fixed percentage of the revenues, that would be your royalties. If gold goes up a lot, those revenues will go up a lot. And as a result, the royalties that the gold royalty company is being paid will go up a lot. There's something called net smelter return or net smelter royalty. Uh, this is my favorite type. And so I try to find companies that are doing a lot of this. We'll talk about one later in this video. Basically, it's a percentage of the revenues, a percentage of the sales of the gold, minus some costs, which are somewhat variable, but I'm not too worried about it. I don't think they're that big. Uh, percentage of the, the, the revenues from the gold minus transportation and refining costs. Now, who are the big gold uh, streaming and royalty companies out there? We have Franco Nevada, FNV. This has the largest market cap at 28 billion. Wheaton Precious Metals, 20 billion. Royal Gold, 9 billion. And then two smaller companies called Osisco, OR, and Sandstorm. And the three that I'm most interested in are Royal Gold, Osisco, and Sandstorm. So let's go take a, uh, a quick look at them. If we go back to our browser here. So, this is a chart from the Osisco investor presentation, and it shows that of all these gold royalty and streaming companies, Osisco has the highest exposure to gold revenues. If you look at it, uh, gold revenues from gold royalties and streaming as a percentage of total revenues in 2019. So I'm really focused on, and I took a position in these three companies yesterday, uh, Osisco, Royal Gold, and Sandstorm. These are the three I'm most, most interested in. You can see Osisco and Royal Gold, they have a fairly high percentage that comes from gold. I'm most bullish on gold because it has the uh, it's the most scarce metal as, metal as measured by stock to flow. Silver is fine as well. I'm less interested in the industrial metals like copper. You can see that something like Franco Nevada has a lot of exposure to energy or has more exposure to energy. And some of these have exposure to platinum uh, and other metals like that. So I'm most interested in gold and I'm most interested in companies that have royalty agreements so we can get that real upside if gold moves up a lot. So let's go back and look at our other companies. So we have these basically Franco Nevada is the biggest one, Sandstorm is the smallest one, and uh, let's look at Royal Gold. This is one that's based in Denver which is where, also where I'm based. Uh, I have no affiliation with the company or anything. I just own some shares as of yesterday. Nice thing about them is they have a very consistent dividend policy. They've been raising their dividend every year for 18 years. And uh, the compound average growth rate in those dividends has been 18%. Uh, so they're growing the dividends really nicely. And they're doing this by entering to, into more agreements, uh, more royalty and streaming agreements. And then what they can do when they get those royalties and streams, uh, they can reinvest. Uh, they can pay some of that out as a dividend and they can also use it to uh, provide payments to new gold miners and enter into future agreements. They'll generate even more cash flow. So you can get a real compounding effect going on. 
As we said, Royal Gold, 78% of the revenue comes from gold. A little bit comes from copper and silver and other metals, uh, but I'm definitely most interested in for its gold revenue. And what's nice about them too is they do not dilute shareholders. At least they don't anymore. I don't think they've issued shares since 2012. And they like to fund their growth just through cash flow. And then they'll, they'll selectively uh, issue debt when they think it's a good time, but they've actually been paying down their debt for the past four years. So they, they, can, uh, they can use their, their cash flow from operations, their royalties and streams to pay off debt. They can use it to enter into new projects and they can also use it to pay a dividend. So I really like Royal Gold. And um, let's go back and take a look at, uh, so that, that, that's Royal Gold. And um, I also own Osisco, as we said. Now, the last one that I like is Sandstorm. Sandstorm is a much smaller company. They have a market cap of just 1.6, 1.7, based in Canada, in Vancouver, British Columbia, like a lot of these gold companies are. What I really like about them is they're small. They have most of their projects in development. So they're not receiving a lot of royalties and streams right now, but they will be going forward. This is a much smaller more risky company. But I've listened to the CEO in a couple of YouTube videos. Seems like a really smart guy. And I like how he emphasizes uh, net smelter royalties, which we talked about, where you just get a percentage of the revenues off the top. If gold goes up a lot, they're really gonna benefit from this. They don't have as many. Uh, they also have a few NPIs, which are net profit interests. Those are, are like royalties, but they they incorporate many more expenses. So you're not just getting a slice of revenues off the top like Warren Buffett talks about is the best form of business. And so I much rather have NSRs where I just get a percentage of the revenues and I don't have to worry about all those other expenses that factor into NPIs. And so if we look at, uh, this is again Sandstorm, S-A-N-D. As I said, uh, they're mostly uh, mostly working on exploration, advanced exploration, development. Uh, they have very few, you can see just a small part of the, uh, the column that are actually uh, producing mines that are paying them royalties. So this is a company, it's, a, it's basically a growth company and all their rev, uh, royalty and streams are mostly in the future. They also have a very small market cap compared to something like Franco, Nevada. It also trades at a discount simply because it's a newer, riskier uh, company. We can see here that both Sandstorm and Osisco both trade at a discount to companies like Royal Gold, uh, Wheaton, and Franco Nevada. This is just uh, enterprise value divided by EBITDA. And what will happen is as Osisco and Sandstorm, if they're successful, if they become more mainstream companies, their, uh, their valuation will go up and they should be uh, receiving uh, EV EBITDA uh, ratios that are comparable to Wheaton and Franco Nevada. They'll also have much higher market caps if everything goes well, and they're able to compound over the years. You can see that Royal Gold itself trades at a discount to Franco Nevada and Wheaton, and uh, I much rather have the exposure to gold. And so it's kind of a double win here where we can buy it at a valuation discount and yet get more gold exposure than you would have with Franco Nevada or Wheaton. And again, we can see Franco Nevada and Wheaton are right here. Um, they have less uh, exposure to gold than Royal Gold and Osisco. We can see here that Sandstorm has even less exposure to gold. Uh, and so you might ask, why am I interested in them? Well, I'm interested in them because they're very small. They have a, a long way to grow. And they also uh, really emphasize NSRs. So let's take a, a quick look at that. They obviously, Sandstorm trades at the discount as we talked about, but if we look at, I'll, I'll link to this, this is an investor presentation from Sandstorm. And if you look at their portfolio of assets, many of these, in fact, most of these are not producing, you can see that they all are, the vast majority of them are NSRs, where you're getting a percentage of revenues. These are royalties as opposed to streams. So rather than locking in that fixed margin, where you get to buy gold at a, a fixed percentage below the spot price, these are percentages of the future revenues. And so if gold goes up a lot, these revenue streams, these royalty streams, are gonna be extremely valuable. And so that's sort of the trade-off. I figured they have less gold exposure, but the gold exposure they do have is not capturing a fixed margin. It is actually has exposure to a lot of upside 
if gold goes up a lot as I'm expecting. I'm going to link a uh, link to this description of NSR's net smelter returns as well. And I'm also going to link to a nice video that the CEO of Sandstorm does. Uh, seems like a seems like a smart guy and seems to really understand uh, how you want to have royalties more than uh, more than some uh, more than a, more than a stream. And so he goes a little bit into the differences between uh, the different kinds of gold royalties and streams. So I'll link to that as well. But as of yesterday, I now own uh, shares in Osisco. I believe the ticker is OR, Royal Gold, RGLD, and Sandstorm. I'm less interested in these bigger companies. These are also, uh, these are probably more conservative. But if you want exposure to gold and you want exposure to uh, royalty streams, NSR, uh, Sandstorm makes a lot of sense, as well as these other two companies that have uh, really high exposure to gold. If you found this video helpful and you'd like to learn a little bit more about how to read a financial statement, how to dig into a company to see if the stock might be a good buy for you, you can check out my online courses. I especially recommend this course on financial statement analysis. If you want to learn how to read a financial statement like Warren Buffett does and not have to rely on analysts or other people, really dig in yourself, this would be a great course, as well as my flagship course on learn to trade stocks like a pro. I also have courses here on how to trade options, how to trade futures, uh, some Bitcoin and crypto related stuff as well. The good news is you don't have to pick one of these courses. If you join Trader University, uh, if you get a 30 day membership, you get access to all 13 courses. So I'll stick a link in the description notes below. If you're interested, if you like my teaching style, if you're tired of uh, being at home, just binging on Netflix, this is a great time to really educate yourself both through my free videos and then as well through my paid courses if you want to go a little deeper. So you can scroll down here, click the link in the description notes below in this video. And if you are interested after uh, clicking on any of these boxes, you can see the list of lectures, you can click get it now, which will take you to this checkout page. And because we're in a recession right now, I wanted to give you a special coupon code. Normally access for 30 days to all of these courses, all 13 courses, and I'm constantly adding new courses, access is just $125 for 30 days. Uh, but I wanna give you a coupon code. If you click have a coupon code and type in YT as in YouTube, nine nine and then click update that'll take 26 dollars off so you can get access to everything for 30 days for just 99 dollars. there are no long-term contracts or anything like that so you can watch all the lectures in the first 30 days cancel before the subscription renews and you won't be billed again if you are if there's something missing uh, that you'd like to learn about a certain course or lecture topic you can also contact me once you're a subscriber and i'll make a course just for you and share it with everyone I want this really to be the best investing and trading resource on the internet. So happy to uh, create more courses as well for my subscribers. Hope you guys found this video helpful. And um, I think it's just a really interesting way of getting exposure to gold and not having to store physical gold bars at your house and also not having to rely on an ETF and to make sure that the custodians of this ETF actually own the gold uh, that they say they do. So if you found this video helpful, please click that uh, subscribe and like button. Let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. And thanks a lot for listening. Hope you're all staying well, and I'll see you in the next video.